we are standing on the edge of two cliffs at the exact same time. On one side is a demographic cliff, a silent collapse of the human workforce as we know it. On the other side is a technological cliff, an AI revolution so fast and so powerful that it threatens to devalue the very skills and labors that built our modern world. Each of these forces alone would be able to reshape a complete society, but they are not happening alone. The reality is these forces are converging. Their collision is creating a perfect storm that is aimed directly at the heart of the middle class. This isn't a distant science fiction problem. This is a story that is happening within the next year, five years, and 10 years. This is a story about economic incentives created by shrinking populations and how AI is becoming the perfect weapon to exploit that weakness, leading to the obliteration of middle class jobs on a scale never before seen in human history. Studies have shown that by 2030, 300 million full-time jobs could be automated and half of the world's workforce could be automated by 2045. But let's look at the human cliff first. A fertility rate of 2.1 children per woman is needed to maintain a global population. The global fertility rate is now around 2.2 and falling fast. It is projected that it could reach below replacement levels by 2030. But that only tells part of the story because high income countries have a fertility rate of only around 1.4 children per woman. While we see places like East Asia and Europe that are on the brink of population and economic collapse, where countries are already seeing massive population losses and completely stagnant economic growth. These countries aren't just making enough people to sustain the population, but they have aging workforces that need a young population to support them. So this isn't a problem about the future, Workforces are already shrinking worldwide, and this creates chronic labor shortages, which sounds like it might be a good thing for workers in the sense that more demand means higher wages. But at the same time, it creates massive, desperate economic incentives for companies to find alternatives to expensive, unreliable, and increasingly scarce human labor. Enter the second cliff. The AI revolution, it's not like automation that just replaces manual repetitive tasks. Generative AI is coming for white collar workers, cognitive work that has defined the modern middle class. AI can now write code, draft legal documents, create marketing plans, and analyze financial reports and much more. These are not low skilled jobs. These are careers that a college degree was supposed to guarantee. Research from McKinsey shows that 30% of current work hours that already exist could be automated by 2030, where the US faces a high risk of automation within the next few years. But the real engine of this AI explosion comes down to better and more powerful computing power. And it's a phenomenon known as Huang's Law, named after NVIDIA's CEO, Jensen Huang. For decades, we followed Moore's Law, where computing power roughly doubled every two years, and eventually it kind of tapered off. But Huang's law observes that the performance of GPUs, the chips that are essentially the workhorses of AI, is advancing at a pace that is far faster than Moore's law ever has. And this exponential acceleration is what allows AI to learn and grow at a speed humanity cannot hope to match. Since 2012, the performance of NVIDIA's top AI chips has increased by a factor of more than 1,000. So we have a convergence creating a perfect storm. Low birth rates, potentially crashing populations worldwide, and it creates demand for automation, while Huang's law is providing an ever more powerful supply. A shrinking workforce makes automation not just an option, but possibly a necessity, or at least it will be argued as such, for economic survival. So why would a corporation, a CEO, negotiate with a union or pay rising health insurance costs for a human worker when AI can do the job faster, cheaper, and without ever taking a sick day. This is the brutal logic now driving corporate strategy. A KPMG survey found that 70% of CEOs are now aggressively investing in generative AI. While the cost of human labor keeps rising because people need food and shelter, the cost of AI is collapsing. By some estimates, the cost of a large language model to perform a task falls by roughly 90% a year. And this means that within a few years, whatever AI is doing now, the cost to run it will be over 99% cheaper. 
So this creates a feedback loop. Demographics shrink the pool of human consumers. AI then removes millions more from the workforce who then also stop consuming. And this combined loss of consumption power threatens to crater the entire economy. It's a downward spiral. And compared to AI, human productivity has basically been stagnant, whereas AI's capabilities are growing at exponentially higher rates. So once AI masters a field, the human jobs will not just decrease, they will be rendered obsolete. So take transportation, truckers, delivery drivers, taxi drivers, rideshare drivers. Once AI perfects self-driving, a process that is likely years, not decades away, those jobs will vanish. There are already multiple self-driving car companies in China that are already taking jobs, as well as Waymo in the US. So these driving jobs that humans currently have, they could potentially fall off a cliff. This leads us to the grim financial reality. The benefits of this revolution are not necessarily designed to be shared. AI has the potential to increase profits of corporations by over 30%, but at the same time, they could actively suppress the wages for any human workers whose skills are not specialized in complementary to AI. In other words, AI will make the owners of capital richer while making the human labor cheaper and more expendable. A relatively optimistic report from the World Economic Forum found that AI could create around 70 million new jobs by 2027, but it will also eliminate potentially 83 million jobs, creating a net loss of over 10 million jobs in just the next few years. So this isn't a call for pessimism, but rather realism and acknowledge that we have falling birth rates, falling populations, and in many ways, this will be an excuse to accelerate the AI revolution saying we can't find human workers and in the process, those with the money, those with the power, those who control the capital will say we need to have AI replace any and all workers right now because those workers don't exist or will not exist in the future. The old social contracts are being torn up. That idea that a middle class life could be obtained through hard work is being erased by shifting demographics and AI taking jobs. Of course, the future is not written in stone. There is a lot of uncertainty, but the technological progress in the last 60 years has created a world where many are finding harder than ever just to get by. You would think that like the last 50 or 60 years with all the technology, all the improvement, quality of life would go up substantially. And yet so many find it harder to just get by. So many find it harder to get a job that can get them a house to live a good life. The reality is unless drastic changes are made to how our economic system functions, where prosperity is shared for displaced workers, then our greatest challenge won't be adapting to the new technology, but surviving the economic chaos it creates. So how do you see this AI future playing out? Share your thoughts in the comments below. If anything I said makes sense, please consider liking and subscribing. This has been Blinded by Logic. Thanks for watching.